والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. I fought because this is the month in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu passed away. Before we start the reading of the Shama'il, that we mention some of his virtues. So, we are Sunni Muslims. One of the distinctions between the two main denominations of Islam, Sunni and Shia, is the fact that we respect all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we say the greatest in rank of all people and all creation is first the Anbiya. So the Prophets of Allah are considered the greatest of all creation. And the greatest of all creation after the Prophets are their nations. And the greatest of all Ummas is the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from amongst the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the ones that are considered highest in rank are the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from amongst the companions, we as Sunni Muslims consider the greatest companion as Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now one of the misconceptions and false beliefs that we have in the other denomination of Islam is that the likes of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not have respect for the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We could give hour long lectures explaining why this is not true but we can just give one or two basic examples that can reject this claim that the likes of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that they were not people that disrespected the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is recorded in the books of the Shia who may make these claims that Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq so Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu one of his children was named Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr was not a very common name so if Sayyidina Ali named one of his child as Abu Bakr it was very clear who he was naming his child after another thing if someone was to say Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was someone that was not liked by Sayyidina Ali then it would not make sense that Sayyidina Ali allowed one of his daughters to marry Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and even if you look at just more logical examples that everyone can see where is the place in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is buried it is within the masjid but more specifically in the house of Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha who are the people buried next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu if their claims were true that these were people that did not respect the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then why would Allah place them in such positions of honour and allow the Ummah for all of history to see them in such positions so it is very clear that their belief that they did, were people that did not respect the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very clearly not true we mentioned a very few quick examples that reject this claim very easily and we could speak for hours and hours talking about their virtues but we will more specifically focus on Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and mention some ahadith in his honour so it is narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said indeed the one who did the greatest favour upon me with his companionship and wealth is Abu Bakr if I took anyone beside Allah as my close friend I would take Abu Bakr but my brotherhood and love for him is there no door should be left in the masjid 
empty or closed except for the door of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The next hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, If I made anyone my khalib, meaning very close friend, he would have been Abu Bakr, but he is my friend and companion and Allah has made me his khalib. So khalib means someone who is a very close friend and someone that you share his secrets with. The Prophet is saying, my Khalil is Allah. But if it was not Allah, who would I, who would I have chosen? It would have been Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So we mentioned earlier, so these hadith that we're reading, if you were to mention them to the Shia or the extremists that do not respect the Sahaba, they would say, we do not accept your hadith. Meaning they don't accept our hadith. But there is one common ground that we have and that is the Qur'an. Meaning the Shia accept the Qur'an and the Sunnis accept the Qur'an. There's no Shia version and there's no Sunni version. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went with Sayyidina Abu Bakr to Medina al munawwara during the Hijrah? Allah says in the Qur'an, Ishuma fil ghar is yaquli li sahibihi la tahsan inna allaha ma'ana fa anzala allahu sakinatahu alayhi wa ayyadahu bi junudin lam taraha that Allah azza wa jalla is saying when they were in the cave it was said to his companion li sahibihi so this is very clearly referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu so he's saying when they were in the cave it was said to his companion the companion is referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq this is accepted in the Sunni books. This is accepted in the Shia books. Allah is saying, لا تحزن إن الله معنا That do not worry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed His sakina, meaning tranquility and calmness, to come upon them. So it is very clear to see that Sayyidina Abu Bakr is Siddiq is being mentioned in the Holy Quran. If he was someone that took away the leadership from Sayyidina Ali and stole it, like they claim, why would Allah Azza wa Jal honor his name in the Holy Quran for all of the Muslims to see throughout all of history? So this does not make any sense. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who worried about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ma dhannaka bithnayn, Allahu thalithuhuma. That what do you think of two people that Allah is their third? Meaning Allah is the one looking after them. So this is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would speak to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was that individual that whenever he would see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a difficult situation, he said, I will not eat and I will not drink until I am certain that the Prophet ﷺ was okay. And it was this kind of love for the Prophet ﷺ that made Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq considered uh, the best of all people, Ba'd al Anbiya, after the Prophet. So the next chapter is a very short chapter. Uh, we last finish on how the Prophet ﷺ would sit. <coughs> we mentioned different names of positions. For example, we mentioned the Prophet ﷺ would sit in a Kurfusa position, where he would sit like this. He sat in an Ihtiba position, meaning there was no wall to lean on. So he would grab a shawl and tie it around his body. And this would be like a makeshift wall in which the Prophet ﷺ would sit. One was the Tashahud position. And another position the Prophet ﷺ would sit was like this when he would eat. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ would not take a very comfortable position when eating. Because when you're extremely comfortable while eating, you'll want to sit there for longer and you'll eat more. So the Prophet ﷺ did not used to sit in positions for eating in a manner where it was as if he wanted to sit there for a long time and eat excessive amounts of food. So the next chapter is about the cushions of the Prophet Sallallahu and it is a very short chapter so we should finish it relatively quickly. The first hadith 
عن ابي بكره قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الا احدثكم باكبر الكبائر قالوا بلى يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الاشراق بالله وعقوق الوالدين وجلس رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان متكئا وقال شه وشهاده الزور او قول الزور فما زال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقولها حتى قلنا لي ليته سكت ابو بكر said the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shall i not inform you about the greatest of all sins they replied certainly o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he replied associating partners with allah and disobeying one's parents the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat up as he had been reclining and said an false testimony the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept saying it so much so that we said to ourselves if only we would be quiet so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying what is the greatest of all sins he says al ishraq billah associating partners with allah in islam this is considered the worst of all sins even more worse than murder and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after mentioning the worst of all sins what is the sin he mentions directly next to that he mentions about disobeying one's parents so for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to mention the most grievous of all sins in islam and directly after that to mention disobeying one's parents this shows us how grave and severe disobeying one's parents is considered in islam for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to mention this specific action after mentioning the worst of all actions shirk billah is considered worse than murder and instead of mentioning murder afterwards the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned disobeying one's parents so this goes to show how severe this sin is in the sight of allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the next hadith an abi juhayfa qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam amma ana fala akulu muttaki'an Abu Juhayfa said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as for me I do not eat reclining as we mentioned this was the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because sitting reclining would encourage someone to want to sit there for a long time and to eat excessively nowadays we sit on chairs we sit on sofas we have tables there and this is one of the reasons why we can sit there for long periods of time and have big feasts perhaps if we simplified it sat on the floor were not all sat comfortably lying down with our backs across maybe this would be something that would encourage us to eat less and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not have big utensils and plates one of the reason why people eat a lot is because they have big plates and when the big plate is there you'll feel like wanting to fill the plate whereas the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would eat with his hands and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not have big utensils so this is how in one way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was moderate in his eating and these are the types of the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we should follow and jabir ibn samurah qala ra'aytu an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam muttaki'an ala wisada Jabir ibn Samurah said I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reclining on a cushion and we mentioned earlier uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he would sleep he would tend to sleep on his right side and we know the medical benefits of doing this now because on your heart your on your left side you have your heart and on your right side you have your liver and the liver is a very heavy organ So when you're sleeping on your left side the liver is compressing and pushing onto the heart so it is causing you to not breathe as efficiently and this is something our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us 1400 years ago and this is something which science confirms today about the wisdom of sleeping on your right side instead of your left side hence why this is the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as we mentioned earlier perhaps we do not know always the wisdom behind why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would tell us something and this is what made sayyidina abu bakr siddiq as we mentioned earlier have such a high rank so when uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went from masjid al haram in makkah to masjid al aqsa in palestine 
the Prophet وسلم, when he completed this journey and he came back he was obviously mentioning this and the mushrikeen of Makkah heard and they were ridiculing him and making fun of the Prophet وسلم, and they gave Abu, Bas Abu Jahl uh, decided that he would gather all of the people and tell them what, what the Prophet وسلم, said. So he said it out loud that, that the Prophet Muhammad, he didn't obviously use the word Prophet, but he was saying that he claims that he went from Masjid al Hara to Masjid al Aqsa. And this is a journey which normally takes one month. However, he is claiming that he did it in a small portion of a night. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam feel? He felt like no one is believing him. And what the mushrikeen of Makkah thought that they thought this is a great opportunity in which we can convince the Muslims not to believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And from amongst the first people that was decided to go to was Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because the mushrikeen of Makkah thought. If we can convince Sayyidina Abu Bakr that the Prophet وسلم, has taught, said something which is not true, then we can convince all of them. Because the one that believes everything the Prophet وسلم, says is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So the Mushrikeen of Makkah decided we will try to convince Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that he did not go on the night journey and complete a month's journey in a short part of a night. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after being informed of what happened, he said, Ahuwa qala dhalik, that did he say that? So he didn't deny, he simply said, did he say that? The mushrikeen of Makkah, they said, naam, yes he said that. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu's reply was, in kana qala faqad sadaq. If he said it, then it is true. So this was the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and this is perhaps the story in which he gained this title as Siddiq that the one who confirms the truth meaning if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it then it is true so the last hadith of the chapter and perhaps we shall finish here Anil Fadl ibn Abbas qala dakhaltu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi maradihi الذي توفي فيه وعلى رأسه إسابة صفراء فسلمت عليه فقال يا فضل قلت لبيك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أشتد بهذه الإسابة إصابة رأسي فقعلت ثم قعد فوضع كفه على منكبيه ثم قام فدخل في المسجد الفضل ابن أباس said I visited the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم during his illness in which he passed away and he had on his head a yellow bandage or a turban. I greeted him and he replied, O oh Abu, O oh, oh, oh Fadl, I said at your service, O oh Messenger of Allah. He replied, tie this bandage on my head, so I did. He then sat up and placed his arm on my shoulder. Then he got up and entered the mosque. So after the Prophet وسلم, passed away, who was the first leader of the Muslims? It was Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his khilafah, meaning leadership, lasted two years. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr was two years younger than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he also passed away two years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they passed away at the exact same age and he was considered the best friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you could say المرغو على ديني خليله that the person is upon the religion of his friend and who greater could Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq continually accompany than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was through his love and accompaniment that made him considered the greatest of all people after the Anbiya so we pray Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the tawfiq to follow in the footsteps of the great companions like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and allows us to have love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just like in the manner of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and we pray Allah Azza wa Jal has mercy on his soul